Come on. Come on. Uh. I got started about 20 years ago when my dad built me a loom. Um, I wanted to learn to weave, and once I started weaving with it, I realized that the yarns that I wanted, I couldn't afford to buy. So I convinced my husband to turn our three-acre lot into a farm, and we raised, started raising two Angora goats. Because we love the goats. I think that's the, it's what my wife and I have in common. Uh, that, that, that is really special for us. Their personality, everyone's different. Their calls, uh, when they have their kids. Uh, the communication between a mother and, and the baby. Uh, their uniqueness in when I call, people are always amazed that they come running. Uh, they just have a personality like unlike any other animal I've ever been around. We're one of the few families in this country that have the animals, have the equipment, that we can take it right from the animal all the way to finished goods. That's what's neat about the whole process. For us to get our yarn, we start at the very beginning. We start with our breeding. Um, Mark is the, is the one that does all the breeding. And that, that's where it's really important to us because that gets us the finest fiber that we want. And that's what we're breeding for. After we bred, we'll have our, our kids in the springtime and then we'll shear them every six months after that. Every six months, I have to shear the goats. The first two clips are the best clips because they're the kid mohair, hair. And we put those separately and we have a whole yarn that we do just with the kid mohair. hair. And then we get the yearling and that's where it's getting to be just a little bit coarser but it's also getting the luster that we really like. So uh, it's not that hard, really isn't, just a lot of time. Mark will shear the goats and then he will give it to me and I will have to wash it all here in the sink. And once it's clean and, and dry, we, we start our processing. And the first one is going to be the picker, which is going to pick the locks apart. And once they're picked apart, we're going to put them on the carter. And the carter is going to brush the fiber. We're going to fill up the, the bins completely with that. And then we're going to start to take that all that fluff that we've just carted and weigh it into one ounce balls. From there, we're going to put it on the carter, and that's going to help us make an even sliver that we want to come out of there. So we're going to feed it through, and we're going to make several bins of slivers, and then we're going to take them over to our draw frame. And I'm going to put three of them together and work with those. And what it does is it takes the, the sliver has to go through a set of pins, which are going to help pull it apart, and it's also going to help to brush it so that it's going to come out more even through the draw frame. Unfortunately, we have to use that three times before we get it so it's perfect. That it's even and that it's all brushed through. Then we're going to take those bins and we're going to put them on the spinner. And so I set it up so that it divides it into a certain amount of pieces as it goes through, which in this case is going to be seven. So between the two rollers, it's going to thin it out and at the bottom of it, it's going to start to spin. And as it spins, it's going to get the twist that I want in the yarn. So after I fill up those bobbins, I have to take it to the other spinner, and I'm going to take two of those bobbins, and I'm going to ply them together in the opposite direction. And that's what's going to give you the yarn that you're used to looking at. After that, the bobbins are full. I'm going to bring them over to the skein winder, and I'm going to skein them on, to make them into skeins. Take them off the bobbins and turn them right into skeins. Once we get those done, I either wash them so that I have a natural yarn, or I dye them by hand painting them. And to hand paint, I take dyes, put them in little pots, and I literally use brushes, foam brushes, to paint my yarn. So it's a time-consuming process. Some of them are just certain colors that I, I gradate as I go along, but other ones I actually do four colors, and then I do overwashes, so it comes out when you're done with it, like 16 shades of the color by doing that. Then they get washed again, reskained again, and then they're tagged and ready to go to the store. For us, it's, again, the enjoyment. Um, it's really not my business, it's my wife's business. I, 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 again, I take care of the animals, I take care of the machinery, I'm more the moral support. Uh, I'm the guy that lugs all the stuff into the shows, out of the shows. 
Um, but we enjoy all aspects of it. it. It's been a learning experience for us. My yarn is a labor-intensive process, but I absolutely love it. I mean, I get the satisfaction of knowing that I've taken it right off from our animals and made a business out of, of processing yarn. But I also get the satisfaction, I could do this just wholesale, and I could do a lot more production, I could do a lot more, and that would be great, but I need that feedback. I absolutely love the feedback when I go to shows and people say that they love the colors. I love playing with colors, and I actually just enjoy immensely having people tell me how much they love the colors and that they can't find yarn like this. What I get out of it is seeing the, my, my wife smile, the smile on her face, to know the satisfaction that she got in providing a product that people will cherish. For me, it's seeing the people come back every year, uh, some for buying more because they really enjoy what they're buying, um, to show us the garments that they made, um, to see the industry as a whole grow. What's difficult for me is the position that the mohair and the wool industry is in today. We are striving to take it to what it used to be. We specialize in 100% in mohair. Mills won't run 100% mohair because it's really difficult to get through all the machinery. And so they want to produce volume and they can't do it. We had our machines especially geared so that we could spin 100% mohair. And so that gives us a nice little niche market, which people love. They love the feel of it. They know they can put it in hot water and right in the dryer and not have to worry about it. And I just enjoy the satisfaction of, of hearing all those compliments.